Hey everyone, today we're going to be building a modern blogging application. We're going to be using React for the front end, Express for the server, Postgres for the database, and Froala for the editor. I'm going to give you a quick demo of the application now, and then we're going to go ahead and start building it out. So you can see I have a number of posts here. I'm going to go ahead and view this post. I can also go ahead and update this post by clicking on the edit button. Let's just go ahead and change the title, and we can save that one off, and it is updated. Finally, we can go ahead and create a new post, and we're going to edit that using the Froala text editor. The first thing we're going to need to do is install our database and go ahead and configure everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we go ahead and get started with our React and Froala app, we're going to go ahead, install Postgres, and make sure everything is working correctly. The way you install Postgres is going to depend on your operating system. I'm using macOS, and if you're using macOS, I would highly recommend using Postgres app the easiest way to get started with Postgres on Mac OS. Either way, once you get it installed, to make sure everything is working correctly, head over to your terminal and run PSQL. If everything worked correctly, you should see a Postgres client. The next thing you need to do is create a database. We can say create database and pass in a name. In this case, I'm going to call my one Froala. And we've now created a database. You can go ahead and connect by saying backslash C and typing in the name of the database. Finally, we can view all of the relations by saying backslash DT. And you can see there are no relations right now. Let's go ahead and create some. The easiest way to do this is by running this command. And at this point, I would highly recommend getting the GitHub repo associated with this video. It's going to save you a lot of time. Let's go ahead and create a brand new articles table with a title and a body column. Now that we've done that, we can run DT again, and we can see the articles relation was indeed created. The next thing we're going to do is insert some data, just so we have something to work with during our testing. Let's go ahead and insert a new article to our database. Now that we've done that, we're going to have some data. Let's make sure we can query that from Node.js and make sure everything is working correctly. If you're following along with the repo, everything is installed, but if you're not, you need to make sure you install all of these dependencies. Specifically for the database, you're going to need Connects, which is a SQL client, and Postgres, which is going to be the database client. The next thing we're going to do is create a connects file, and this is going to tell Node.js how to connect to your database. You need to specify a few things, the client, which is Postgres, the database name, and your username. If you're not sure what your, your username is, an easy way to check is to go ahead and create a new Postgres client, and it's going to tell you right at the front what your Postgres username is. Once you've done that, you've finished configuring connects, so let's go ahead and give it a try. The first thing you need to do is head over to a new file I'm calling mine server, and I'm going to go ahead and import connects. The next thing we need to do is grab our database credentials, so I'm just going to say import creds, and that's going to come from the connects file we just created. Finally, let's go ahead and create a new DB client by saying connects and passing in our credentials. We're now in a position to write a query. I'm going to query the articles table, and we're going to go ahead and select all of the columns. Finally, to see if it worked, let's just do a console log to make sure everything is working correctly. Now that we've done that, I'm going to save this one off and go ahead and execute it. Let's go ahead and run node server. And with a bit of luck, we're going to see our article was successfully queried. So we're now successfully connecting to our Postgres database from node.js. Now that we've successfully connected to our Postgres database, let's go ahead and start working on our application. I've already created a brand new Vite, React, and Froala application. I would highly recommend cloning this repo. It will save you a lot of time and configuration. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start working on our server. We've got a simple query here. What we need to do is build out a little server to serve this data. So I'm going to go ahead and say import express from express. The next thing we're going to do is create a new express app by saying const app is equal to express. And we are going to be using JSON, so I'm going to say app.use express.json. Finally, we're going to go ahead and start our app on port 3000. The next thing we're going to do is think a little bit about our endpoints. We're going to start off with one to serve up all of our articles, so I'm going to say get slash articles. This is going to be asynchronous, so we're going to have an asynchronous callback, and it's going to be very similar to what we're already doing up here. I'm going to go ahead and query all of my articles inside of here, and we're going to say const articles is equal to await db and query the articles. Once we've got those, we're going to go ahead and return it as a JSON response. So I can say response.json and pass in my articles. Finally, if we did everything correctly, we should now be able to query all of our articles using a JSON API. Let's go ahead and try it out. 
If I head back to my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and head start up my server. And then we're going to go ahead and say curl localhost 3000 slash articles. If we did everything correctly, we should see a single article in the response. And we are indeed seeing that. So everything is now working correctly. Let's go ahead now and start up our React app and see if we can consume this from our React application. Once you've cloned the GitHub repository, go ahead and run npm run dev. It's going to start up our dev server. We're now going to talk a little bit about our front end application and then see how we can consume that list of articles using a JSON API. Going to head over to our editor and we're going to start from the main component. This is the very root of our application. We're going to import React and React DOM followed by a number of route components, which we'll talk about in just a moment. We're then going to import React Router, which is going to give us some front-end routing, the Froala style sheets, of course, for our Froala editor, and our styles. The next thing we're going to do is to find our route table, and there's going to be four routes. The root at route, which is going to show all of our articles. We're going to have a create article, which is going to use the Froala editor to create an article. We're also going to use Froala to edit an article, and we're also going to have a show articles page, and this is going to be for viewers, not editors. Finally, we go ahead and render out our React application. Let's go ahead and take a look at our root component and start fetching those articles. We have a number of things in here. The most important one to look at is the article service. This is where all of our fetching data is going to be housed. What we're going to do is fetch our data. We're then going to update our state by calling set articles. We're then going to pass this as a prop to the articles component, and this is going to render a list of articles. We're going to go ahead and fetch the component or fetch the data by using use effect. Let's go ahead and pass an empty array as the dependencies so we just fetch this one once on the application startup. We're then going to go ahead and call our service by saying articles service and we're going to use uh, the all uh, function. This is going to fetch all of our articles. We're then going to say then and we're going to pass in set articles as the callback. We're going to pass all of our articles to set articles which is going to update the state. Let's go ahead now and implement the all endpoint. We have all of the endpoints here, but none of them have actually been implemented. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to say const response is equal to await, and we're going to use the fetch API to go ahead and fetch from slash API slash articles, which is how I've configured this application. We're then going to return this as a JSON object. So I'm going to say response.json, and we're going to cast this one to an array of articles. Now that we've done that, if we head back to our app component, we can see the error is now gone. And with a bit of luck, everything is now going to be working. Let's go ahead and give it a try. If I head back to my browser and refresh the page, we are indeed fetching all of the blog posts. We have a link to the blog post and an edit button over here. Just to show you how that one works, let's go ahead and take a look at the articles component. It's going to receive all of those articles as props. We're just going to map over those and render out a list. We're going to have a link and that's going to be imported from React Router DOM to give us some front end routing. We're going to link to both the article, which we haven't created yet, and also the article edit endpoint. Let's go ahead now and implement the editor using Froala so we have the ability to edit our articles. Now that we're rendering a list of articles, the next thing I'd like to do is be able to edit them. At the moment, we have a route which takes us to articles slash ID slash edit, but there's nothing rendered here. For this to work, we need to have a few things. The first thing we need to do is fetch the article. Once we've fetched that, we need to go ahead and render a Froala editor, then pass the data to the editor. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we're going to do is head over to our server and implement one more endpoint. This one is going to be the get endpoint. We're going to go ahead and copy paste this code, but this one is going to get based on the ID. So let's go ahead and pass in an ID parameter. We now need to go ahead and update our query. We're not just going to get all articles, we only want one specific one. So we can go ahead and say where ID we're going to say that is equal to, and that's just going to be equal to request.params.id. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and say first, because we only want to grab the very first entry. We only want one article. We're now going to update our query to be article, and then we're going to return that as a JSON response. Just to make sure everything is up to date, I'm going to go ahead and restart my server. With a bit of luck, this should be working. Let's go ahead and give it a test. I am going to use curl, and in this case, we're going to grab the very first one, ID one, and that is working correctly. The next thing we're going to do is load this in our React app. So let's go ahead and do that. We previously talked about the app component. We're now going to look at the edit article component on articles slash ID slash edit. Let's go ahead and do that one now. 
Save a little bit of time I did write some code, we still have to implement the rest of it ourselves. We need to fetch the article and then we're going to render our Froala editor. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and implement the endpoint in article service. We currently did all, so the next thing we're going to do is get. It is going to be very similar, so let's go ahead and copy and paste that one. The only difference is we're going to pass in the ID here. So we're going to say ID and use JavaScript string interpolation. And this is going to be a single article, not an array of articles. Now that we've implemented that, the next thing we're going to do is head back to our edit article component and make sure we call the code correctly. We have got an effect down here. It's going to be very similar again. We're going to go ahead and await for our response and then update our state by saying set article. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say article service dot get. We're going to pass in the ID by saying params dot ID. This one comes from React Router. I'm using the use params hook up here. Now that we've got that one, let's go ahead and say then and then pass in our set article callback. And that is going to update our state. Now that we've got the article, we can go ahead and render our editor, passing the article and handle submit as a prop. The reason I'm passing this as a prop is we're going to use the editor for both creating a new post and editing an existing one. And the behavior on submit is going to be slightly different. Let's head inside of editor now and implement our Froala editor. I'm saving the HTML and the article here. So all we need to do is go ahead and implement Froala ourselves. The easiest way to do this is by using their dedicated plugin. Inside of the Froala organization, they have the React Froala, what you see is what you can get component. I would highly recommend using that. You can go ahead and install it like this. Once you've installed it, let's go ahead and give it a try. The first thing we're going to do is head back to our editor and you can see I'm already importing the component, Froala editor component. The next thing we need to do is come down here and actually implement that by saying Froala editor component. And we're going to use two of the options. First is going to be model, and this is going to be the content. I'm going to say that is going to be article.html. And that's going to be what we fetched earlier from our props. And then we're updating the state. So now that we've done that, it's going to be HTML. We're also going to say on model change. And this is going to be called every time the user types into the, the what you see is what you can get editor. We're going to say handle model change, and that's going to receive the new HTML. We're just going to go ahead and update the state by saying set HTML. And that way we're going to have access to the latest code no matter what. I'm doing exactly the same thing with title and set title. That's just going to be input for the title of the post. Let's go ahead and close this one off and make sure everything is working as expected. Going to save that one off and head back to the browser and see what's happening. You can see that is working as expected. Just to show you, I'm going to go back and we're going to hit edit. It is going to load up our Froala editor component. We also have the title and we can go ahead and start editing right away. The next thing we need to do is handle what happens when you submit the post. We need to take the content and update the database. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're now back on the server. Before we implement any more front end code, we need to make sure the correct endpoints exist on the back end to update our database. So let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be a put endpoint because we're updating a resource. It is going to be article slash ID. The query is going to be slightly different. So let's go ahead and write that. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable called article, and that's going to have our updated content. We're going to update the title by saying request.body.title, and we're going to do the same thing with body. It's going to be request.body.body. We're then going to do an update query as opposed to a select query. So I can go ahead and say update, and we're going to pass in our new post or our new article. Finally, we're only going to update the one with the current ID. So we're going to say ID is equal to request.params.id and we can remove the first uh, query. That should be all we need to do. We're not going to return a new re resource. Instead, we're just going to go ahead and say send status re and return a 200 to indicate that the resource was successfully updated. I'm fairly confident this is going to work correctly. So let's go ahead and implement the front end code and see if everything is updated correctly. We're now back on the front end in our editor component, which wraps the Froala editor component and sets up two way binding. What we need to do now is handle what happens when the user submits the form. It's going to be slightly different for creating new posts and editing existing ones. In this case, we're editing an existing post. So we're going to call submit, passing in the new title, the new body, and the ID. Let's go ahead and take a look at the parent component and see what we're doing there. We have a handle submit method, which receives an article as the first argument. We're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is make a request to update the database. We're then going to navigate back to the root of the application. So the first thing we're going to do is say article service.update. We're going to pass in our article. 
we are going to say await here. And let's go ahead now and implement the update endpoint. I'm going to head in there now. We can see it's currently stubbed out. It is going to be very similar to get, so I'm going to copy and paste that code. One of the main differences here is we're going to receive the entire article and pass in the ID. We need to also include the correct body. What we're going to do is say body and pass in the content. So it's going to be dayjson.stringify and we're going to pass in the article. In addition, we're going to have the correct method, which is going to be put. And we're also going to go ahead and have the correct content type. So I'm going to say headers and say content type is equal to application.json. If we did everything correctly, this is hopefully going to work. What I'm going to do is remove the return type here. We don't need that one. And in fact, I'm not going to do this at all. I'm simply going to go ahead and say return await fetch. And then we're going to return a promise that has been resolved. Let's go ahead now and give this a try and see what happens. Once we have finished saving the article, the last thing I'd like to do is navigate back to the root homepage. We can do that using the use navigate hook from React Router. All we need to do is go ahead and say navigate and pass in where we'd like to go. In this case, we'd like to navigate back to the root URL. Let's save it off and give it a try. If I head back to the browser now, I have an editor here with some content. We're going to go ahead and hit submit. And that was successfully submitted. Let's verify everything was updated correctly. I'm going to head back to my terminal and do select all from articles. And we can see this is uh, not actually working correctly. We're seeing the old content here, which is not what I was expecting at all. Let's go ahead and make sure we've restarted the Node.js server uh, just to make sure we're using the latest code. And we're going to try that one one more time. Going to hit edit post we're going to go ahead and have this as bold and save it off if i now head back to my terminal i run my query again we can see this is now working correctly and we can see how for a while it works instead of saving just some simple text we're actually going to save the html including the paragraph tag and the strong tag so we're going to have our content here ready to render as a post in html now that we're successfully updating a post let's go ahead and implement an endpoint which is going to allow us to view the post complete with all of the html We've now successfully integrated Froala with our React application and with our Postgres database. I can go ahead, edit my post and submit it, and that is going to be updated. The final feature I'd like to implement is the ability to view the post. If I go ahead and click on this link, it's going to take me to articles slash ID, which is currently just showing the title. What I would really like to do is render the content as well. And this is going to be very straightforward since Froala, as discussed, saves everything as HTML. All we need to do is go ahead and grab that data and render it on the page. Let's see how we can do that. If I come back to my editor and look at my routing table, we can see articles ID is going to use the show articles component. Let's take a look at that. We have some local state with our article and we're now using use effect to use article service dot get something we implemented earlier to go ahead and grab the article. We're currently showing the title and all we need to do is go ahead and show the content as well. We can go ahead and do it like this. We're going to use dangerously set in a HTML and pass in the HTML as article.body. And that should be all we need to do. Let's go ahead now and give this one a try. And with a bit of luck, we should be rendering our HTML content. And so it is, everything is working as expected. The HTML is correctly rendered. And if we go ahead and inspect it, we have the P tag and we have the strong tag. So this is doing exactly what it should be. One thing to note is I have a P inside of a P, which is not semantically correct. A better way to do this would be changing this tag here. I'm just going to go ahead and make this one a div instead. Heading back to the browser, we can see that is correctly updated and our HTML is nice and semantic. And this is one of the great things about Froala is the output HTML is actually pretty clean and is going to be exactly what you would generally expect if you were writing something by hand. Although this is obviously a lot easier than writing your own HTML by hand. Everything is now working correctly. We have the ability to edit posts and the ability to view posts. There you have it. We've successfully created a React application, integrated Froala with both the React application, a Node.js server, and a Postgres database. I'm now going to leave you with a few exercises to move forward and develop the application. We implemented the ability to edit posts, but what we haven't got is the ability to create a new post. This is very similar to editing a post. The main difference is the endpoint is going to not only update a post, but it's going to create a new entry in the database. If you'd like to see the full solution, go ahead and check out the GitHub repo and you can see how I've implemented that. Finally, the last thing you should do is go ahead and explore Froala a little bit more. Right now we can create very simple posts, but Froala has a huge plugin ecosystem that's going to allow you to do all sorts of different things. If you're a programmer such as myself and you're creating a blog, a few plugins I would recommend is the code view so you can have code snippets 
and the uh, file manager or the image manager. So you can upload images to your blog application as well. Again, there's a bunch of different things here, including markdown, quotes, saving, and all that sort of thing. Uh, definitely worth exploring these as well. That's all I've got for you today, and I'll see you in the next video.